Uh, who knew? Apparently, there's uh, this uh, James Comey book that's out, and uh, you know a lot of people are talking about it. The president responding uh, to Mr. Comey, referring to him in a tweet as a weak and untruthful slime ball, and. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so far. Uh, and the hits just keep on coming. Um, so, so let's get into this here because it is going to have an effect on things here if there are revelations or some people feel that it pushes the president to the brink and he starts firing people. I think that's what a lot of them wish, fact, frankly. But the but, but fact of the matter is it's all anyone is talking about except me when I refer to the bond market. But they, <laughs> You're into bigger and better things, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. All right, we, we have got uh, Charlie Gasparino here. We've also got uh, Bush 43 speechwriter uh, Annika Green and Fox News contributor Roy Murdoch. Annika, um, this is going to be all Comey all the time this weekend with the, the, the interview and, and, and the interviews to follow and the, you know, the thrashing around of the book. I, the whole thing... And uh, D. Roy said it best during the break, it's more tawdry and sensational than anything else. But what do you make of the whole fluster it's creating? Well, it's predictable in that that's part of the reason he wrote the book, and that's the entire point. They want to get a lot of buzz. They want this to attain number one ranking on all the bestseller lists. They want to make some money. That's the reason he's writing the book. I mean, he also wants to set the record straight, but writing tell-alls is a time-honored Washington tradition, and he's participating in it. It's his chance to get the last word, in a sense. Any residual impact here? What do you think? Oh, I think that what uh, Trump's enemies want to do is drag him down in the mud. And I think he needs to stay out of the mud and stay above the fray and just uh, focus on... You think on he can do that? <laughs> he really should. I don't know if he can. What he should do is do that and then let his surrogates and let the people who work for him attack Comey by asking him some very difficult questions. Like, for example, why did you start writing the exoneration speech about Hillary Clinton two months before her interview and the interview of 17 other witnesses? Why did they immunize Cheryl Mills and uh, Heather Samuels, two aides to, to Hillary Clinton, and then destroy their laptops? Who destroys laptops even before a trial has happened or an investigation has ended? And then he changed the um, Espionage Act standard of proof from gross negligence to extreme carelessness. There's nothing in that statute about ex extreme carelessness. Where did Comey get the power to do that? Those are the kind of questions. Yeah, apparently. Trump's I've not read the book. I've read a lot of the excerpts that are out there. And one of the, the, the presuppositions he had going into the whole thing and Hillary Clinton was he thought she was going to be the next president. Yeah, I, 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 full disclosure, I've known Comey for years. I covered him when I was at the Wall Street Journal when he was doing his Wall Street crackdown, a guy named Frank Quattrone, who... Uh, it's, oh, sure. I think it's instructive to look at what Comey did with Quattrone in the context of what he's what he cares about with Donald Trump. I mean, Comey is just... its He's over the top in his... Uh, I, I, it's hard to explain this. He's over the top in his belief on what constitutes right and wrong. And, you know, he'll... St if he... If you, if you pierce his sort of... The, the, the problem... If you, if you show that you are uh, guilty, even if it's that guilty, he will bring the whole the whole apparatus of the government down on you, even if it's that guilty. And that's the way Comey is. And I... Well, he I, didn't bring the whole apparatus of the government down on Hillary Clinton. I, I, I know, <laughs> but if he didn't... Because he didn't think she was guilty. And he, he, he didn't think she was as bad. It, it, this is... This is... you got to get into Comey's head. It's, he's a very complicated guy. If you defy his moral standards, you end up on the bad side. Well, of I, don't, I, I think worry that's about, where, you ever notice, like, you don't you worry about Well, that's called sanctimonious. Uh, being sanctimonious. Well, but that's what I'm saying, that, that he does have this sanctimonious quality where things, he keeps talking about how, yeah. how, how good he is. I'm sure and he's how a bad, And how bad Donald is right, as, right. as a character. But, but I want to pursue that, Anika, with you a little bit here. And this notion that he clearly is not a fan of the president, some of these excerpts are indicating, has a very, very damning view of the guy. And I'm wondering if he had stayed in power... Um, he would have maintained that view, wouldn't he? Oh, he absolutely, absolutely would have. And I think he was revealing in the way he's handled this book that he would have been an activist for whatever views he thought were appropriate, even outside of the bounds of his office. And we did see some of that before he was fired. And I think that's and very not concerning. only from him, not only from him. Yes. Now, say what you will yes. of Donald Trump, say what you will, whether it's fair or whatever. Right. But a lot yes. of principles that the FBI security agencies, even those that appear on CNN and what have you, um, have a dim view of Donald J. Yeah. Trump, maybe for perfectly well, and, legitimate reasons. But these are people who, when they were in power in those days uh, and, and were in a position to, to, to judge him, 
didn't like it. Right. And exactly you know, the that, that's a it's big deal. It's the abuse deal. of power. Look, you can, you can, like, you can like or dislike Donald J. Trump, right. but you can't abuse power the way that Comey did. You know, leaking these uh, memos he had of his meetings with Trump to Daniel Richmond, his friend at Columbia University, specifically so he could leak them to journalists and then get a special counsel I'm not as worried. That violates the law, and he ought to be arrested I, for that. I, I'm not as worried about that. I don't think that violates the law. Here's where I think Comey's You don't think problem. that violates the law? Viol yeah, no, violates I don't. the Espionage I he, Act. I, the, those were not classified. Those were not classified. You think it's creepy. Deal all you think it's defense. creepy. Yes. And here's what I would say. I would say this. What scares me about Comey is his sanctimoniousness. His is that a word? Sanctimoniousness. That's a word. Yes. Sanctimony. His his is sort of like he goes after people. He he thought Frank Quattrone was immoral, and when Frank Quattrone issued an email, sent out an email that could have been taken 15 different ways. This guy is a former investment banker. He charged him with obstruction of justice because he believed the guy was immoral. I will say one other thing, though, and this is where the president is at fault. I know for a fact when they were deliberating on who to, should they reappoint uh, Comey uh, back during the transition in 2016, uh, Trump was told by a lot of people, don't. You know, the, guy's, you know, the guy who is, is what he is, and he did it anyway. Now, why did he do it anyway? My view is that it was payback. He believed Comey gave him the election. I really believe that, and so do a lot of people surrounding Trump. So this, remember, there's no good guy. There's a lot of gray hats in this. In well, this I, yeah, I don't know, but Annika, I do know, is this the kind of book, again, I would stress, I haven't read it, I don't know, I just know what's gotten all the buzz. Is this the kind of book that a sanctimonious person, whatever you want to describe, writes? I mean, because it seems, again, to Edward's point, more, more that toward sensational stuff than a thoughtful, former FAI director of the interest of our country and red, white, and blue and all of that in mind? Well, I think he's a very self-righteous person. I think that we have seen that. I think what has happened in, I was, I was a former book editor. When you're writing a book, and he probably had a ghostwriter, you know, we'll, we'll find out when the book is published um, by looking at it. I don't think he you did, get by pushed. the way. I don't, well, think, he, I don't he, think he did. He may have. Well, I think a lot of the political things he was saying, like the the small hands and was he in a tanning bed, like either he was that was put in there by a ghostwriter or he was pushed well, he might have had an to say those things by a marketing him. team. He might by have a marketing an team who's yeah. okay, but an editor, editor, your view is that's to meant to sell books. You put that kind of yes, stuff in, it's meant yes, to sell books. Yes, and every author is susceptible to that. You are I'm being not so pushed. worried about his descriptions of. I mean, that's standard book editing. Tell me what he looked like. You know, tell me yeah. what stood out. What was interesting was the whole thing about the Russians and the process. Institutes. That whole scene, it, the way he brought it up was so disingenuous. He brings it up and saying, I can't tell you if Donald Trump was urinated on in Russia. Unbelievable. I can't tell you. Then why are you telling yeah, me? And then again, where, where is, <laughs> where's the evidence of collusion? You know, Trump and Putin deciding, okay, here's how we're going to steal the election yeah, for you. In return, yeah. you'll drop sanctions. There's nothing in this book that, that proves that. And Comey himself, himself said Trump may have done some things that were unethical. Let me ask he you, did you nothing do you that think, constitute obstruction of justice.